Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. We are gonna build a fireplace today, kind of like this one. Oh, wait a second. That is the one we're gonna do. This intro is actually started after I've already done the work because I was not sure on what <coughs> I was gonna do for the day. But we ended up doing the fireplace and this is a video explaining how to do it. Check out what came in the mail today. It is the fireplace. So I'm gonna open it and test fit it in the hole there. Uh, but I'm just test fitting it because I have to wrap this in a kind of like a membrane that keeps the moisture from the mortar going through. And then I need to wrap it with the steel mesh and nail it on. So I'm gonna open this up and test it and see if it fits. But let's see why. Okay, the reason it does not fit is because this back portion is called the width is wider than what the instruction said online when we ordered it. So I built the fireplace with those numbers in mind. 33 and a half inches is what they said it was, 33.5. And it is almost 34 and three quarters. So that is a whole inch and a quarter larger than they said it was online. So that's a bad review fits in the same distance properly on the side, but it does not fit. So we're gonna have to take and cut out these two by fours and move them over a half inch on each side uh, because I left some gap, some room there, some extra just in case it wasn't the right size, but I didn't leave a whole inch and a quarter. Uh, so I'll take those two by fours out. Those aren't supporting anything. Those are just on the side. And then we'll trim out the sides and then slide her in. Okie dokie, now that is resized and it should fit. So let's, let's test it out. Like a glove, check it out. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? I think so. Our next step is to wrap this, like I said, with a waterproof membrane my thing down there. This is basically a roofing felt. Most people use tar paper, they call it. It's this black paper that's covered in tar. That's what called tar paper. But anyways, this stuff is just, just as good. This is used for roofing. Um, and I had this left over from a job, a roofing job I actually did for this church three years ago. So, but it's still good, it's been kept inside. So we're gonna staple it onto there. Okie dokie, artichokey. Now that that is wrapped, we can worry about the next step, which is putting the mesh on. Let me grab that real quick. They come in two foot by eight foot sheets. It's just this diamond uh, type stuff. And you nail it or staple it or screw it, whatever your desire it is, onto, onto that. So we're going to try to use our new stapler that we bought for the other project and staple it 
on there and we'll staple the bejeebies out of it. That way it stays nice and tight to the wall. That way when we put our mortar on, it has something really strong to hold on to. And then we can come back through and put our stone on, like down here. So this stone is just temporarily there, but that is the stone we're gonna stick on. It was just there to kind of give some looks, but this is what it looks like. These are the corner pieces. They're a corner. The back is just concrete because it's just a formed stone. But uh, the face looks like these stones. And then we're gonna put mortar on the back and we'll push it into the mesh. And it'll look just like that, but all the way up. So anyways, let's get to working on putting the mesh on there. This looks better and better every time we get something new on there. So we have got the metal mesh on all the way around and stapled. Let me give you a close up of that real quick. Zooming in close here. You can see there's a little gap between those. Not a huge deal. We're just trying to get it to where there's enough structure behind the stone. That way it holds on. Uh, and that's just the way the pieces worked out. And so the reason that's extra shiny is because it's going the opposite direction than these ones. But it doesn't matter. They're all nailed on and stapled. Let's see if I can zoom in here. There's a staple there, just holding, there's a whole bunch of them. Just probably like on a four inch pattern all the way around. So then we have that slid in there. Now we have to do the stone still, and here is a stone for example. And it's going to stick out about that far. And so I'm going to probably put on a backer here that will bring the fireplace out just about three quarters to an inch or so. That way, uh, this stone reveal around it doesn't have that fake cut edge on it. The uh, fireplace will come more to right here. That way you can't see the end of that. So that's the plan there. But anyways, it looks really good. And it's on there nice and strong. And I've only got like four cuts. So that's great. <laughs> but anyway, the stone is going to come on another video because I cannot put the stone on until we get the floor you can put in. And I can't do the flooring until we get the texturing done if we put the flooring down then we're gonna to have to clean it every time we texture or cover it and uncover it every time we do something with paint or texture and i don't feel like doing that so we're gonna finish the muddy mess first and then we'll worry about the floor and then once the flooring's down we'll cover it around where we're working and then stone the fireplace so anyways that's about it so thanks for watching thanks very much for watching we are still at 77 subscribers, but that does not mean that we won't grow to 100 here soon. Still hoping for 100 before my birthday on the 29th of August. That would be great. So anyways, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, look in the comments, and uh, and the description too. And just, just look it all over. But anyways, we'll catch you later. God bless.